What is up, everybody? Welcome to this Wednesday's edition of our Creators Live. It is March 3rd. I think. Is that right, Surfing? That's March right. 3rd. Yeah, March 3rd. All right. Well, happy. love having everybody here. I know we still got people that are still going to be coming in, but happy to see everybody here. We've got 17 people in the room at the moment. Today's topic, we're going to be covering the most common DTG printing mistakes and how you can avoid them. Whether you're, you're novice, you're new to printing, or you're, you're an expert, you've been printing for years. This is a great refresher topic that Seraphine's gonna walk us through that's going to realign people around some common mistakes that we're making in our day-to-day -day operations, whether you're the one printing or it's your employee, and how we can avoid them so that we can save money and have a better overall experience and keep printing and keep printing cash as a result. So love having everybody here. As a reminder, these things go roughly 60 minutes. Seraphine's gonna coach us through uh, on the topic for 25. And then we're going to go into some Q&A for about 20 to 25 minutes to close it out. And then I'm going to end it with an offer for you guys. And in today's case, we actually just came out with a brand new product. Seraphine, did you know about that? The new product that went live today? The new Platinum? No, I don't. Yeah, see, it is top secret, baby. We're going, to be, we're going to be releasing that to all of our customers. And I could not be more pumped about it. We only have five of them in stock too. So I'm hoping that our, the people here can capitalize on the deal. Um, and I'll, I'll give you guys a link to, to go ahead and check that out. But... Anyway, Seraphine, if you for those of you who don't know Seraphine, Seraphine's our tech manager. He's an absolute expert with every free jet product. Um, Seraphine, how long have you been working here with Omniprint? So in uh, about two and a half weeks, it'll be two years. That'll two years. Two okay. years with Omniprint. That's awesome. So Seraphine's uh, what he does in the day to day. You probably see him floating in and out of the customer Facebook group. Uh, you'll see him. You may even be interacting with him uh, on a ticket. Uh, but he's our main man here. He's our resident expert. And so, Seraphine, I'd love to just hand the mic over to you so you can walk us through the coaching session. Appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you, guys. Like Ryan said, my name is Seraphine, and I've been with Omniprint now going on two years. I am the tech service manager here at Omniprint. And today we'll be going over the most common errors or mistakes that we make when printing. One of the things I want to go over fairly quickly is the platen placement, right? I know that the majority of customers, when they first get their machine, they're, they're unaware of what side is the front and what side is the back. And as you can see, it looks pretty even on both ends. So it'd be, I can see how that mistake could be made. Usually what I tell customers on a standard platen, you just want to stand it straight up. If it stands straight up, then that is the front. That is what faces towards me. If you can tell the uneven part here from the top and the bottom, they're uneven. So placing your platen incorrectly is one of the most common mistakes that we see, which then adds to your margin, right? When you're adding those margins from the top, it can look as if it's printed further down when in reality, it's just a matter of flipping your platen uh, over. Uh, so that's one of the most common mistakes. Sticking with the platen, same thing, uh, lining it up, making sure that it's all the way up towards the front and closest to the keypad. At times, customers just line it up to the front, which then can cause you an issue again with your lineup of your shirt if it's not close enough to your keypad. You want to make sure that it is all the way up to the front and closest to the keypad, so to the top right corner uh, for lack of better use. I know some customers use the back as a front and the front as a back, so it just depends on how you're looking at it. But if where I'm standing, I'm looking at it straight on on it up towards the top right side of your printer to ensure that you have it lined up. Another common mistake that we do, and it's really because a lot of us like to be nice and neat. And I know that a lot of our customers like to fold up their shirts and have them nice and folded in an area stacked up together, which is great, right? That's organization. But when you see that and you take your garment out, as you can see, this one will have a crease, right? down the middle and off on to the side. And what happens there is if you go straight to load up your shirt, right? Since most of you customers, most of our customers know that you can pre-treat your shirts and have them there for a couple of weeks and be able to print on them. When you go to, to load it, uh, you can see this area here, how these creases stay up. So it's very important that you go and you press it on your heat press for about 10 seconds, medium pressure. Uh, you don't want to press it down too, too long. Uh, and this is to ensure 
that you have the correct height on your shirt when you're ready to load it up. Because uh, then it makes it very difficult to load it. As you can see here, as I'm trying to load it, and you should be nice and gentle, kind of evenly going when you're, you're tucking in your shirt. And, and as you can see, there's still a lift on, your, on the shirt there because of that crease. So it's important that, and that you don't stretch out your garment too far either. That gets me to my next point is stretching of the garment when you're loading it up is that you want to make sure that you're not pushing it in too tight. Uh, that's stretching out the fiber. So when you go to pull it out, it can then come back together and ruin your print. Also making sure that you, your shirt is bent free, right? Uh, always keep your shirts uh, in the same colors to ensure that you don't have any fibers from a blue shirt to a red shirt, uh, a black shirt to a white shirt. Uh, and we know how those white shirts can pick up fibers so easily, uh, especially those blends, right? They're those nice soft style ones. Those are all kind of combined together, right? The platen placement, making sure that your shirt uh, is nice and tucked in, nice and flat uh, to ensure that the proper height of your print head is correct when you're, when you're starting to print. The other common mistake is to print without a nozzle check. Probably know your machine better than anybody and you'll probably know before you even print whether or not you're gonna have a good nozzle check. Uh, but it doesn't take away from, you know, it's staying in that habit of ensuring that you print a good nozzle check, right? You go straight into printing after you prime your lines and you do your two head cleanings and you don't do a nozzle check, you won't know if any of your consumable parts may have gone out, right? So you want to ensure that you print a nozzle check. As you know, it's always on your, your driver and you're able to go into your devices and printers to ensure that you have the correct driver. That's another issue that we run into from time to time. Uh, when you delete your driver for whatever reason, if you're having any computer issues and you go back and reinstall it or you reconnect the, the printer, sometimes it creates a copy if you uninstall it correctly. So you wanna make sure that you have the right driver up there. And if there's a copy, delete it so that it doesn't confuse you in the future, since a lot of us like to put it in the desktop. Once you print your nozzle check, obviously you wanna make sure and once you're good, you go back to your platen placement, your garment being nice and flat and ensuring that you get a good uh, quality print. Uh, choosing the correct environment, right? uh, knowing your shirts and your garments is one of the biggest issues that you'll see or I guess learning curves for customers in the beginning. Uh, and making sure that you, you pick the right uh, environment. Uh, when, you, when you pick the correct environment, you'll get the print that you want. For example, this is a completely black shirt, right? I'm gonna choose a black environment, regardless on whether I'm going on quality or I'm gonna go on production mode or photo mode or uh, just my regular TX mode. Any mode that you choose, you wanna make sure you choose black media. One of the reasons for that is, is because wherever there's black, it's not gonna print black, it's gonna use my shirt, right? Which saves you on your cost there. Uh, it's very important to ensure that, uh, that you choose the correct media uh, so that that way you get a good quality print, a white, nice solid under base, right? And then your color comes right after that. Knowing when you have a head strike, right? If you have a, your, your platen is not placed correctly or if your garment has any folds, your printer sits about four, three to four millimeters from your garment. So that's real close. Uh, any hairs sticking up on, or fibers sticking up on your garment will get picked up right by your print head, right? So it's very important. It goes back to making sure that your garment is nice and flat. Your shirt is nice and no creases when you're tucking it in to ensure that you don't fall into any of those issues. And obviously when printing, knowing immediately when to stop your printer if you if you do see a head strike or you see that it is rubbing or it comes too close, right? For those of you that don't know, the feeding button will stop whatever layer it's doing. You just press it once, it'll stop and it'll move all the way back. And that way it stops from printing and it ensures you that you can go into uh, your head strike procedures. For those of you that don't know or don't have it, 
you know, we have it in our videos, what to do with, if you were to have a head strike, we've got the step-by-step -step on what to do. One of the other things is also picking the right garment, right? So we always talk about ring spun shirts. When you're, you're picking the right garment, it gives you ultimately the best quality of print. Ring spun is the way that the, the, the fibers are, are threaded, right? So you always want to make sure that uh, you get the best quality garments to ensure, right? And know the differences between your heavy cottons, your blends, your, your ring spun, uh, et cetera, right? Making sure that, that you're aware of what you're using. Uh, I know that there are customers that love to print on, on heavy cotton. Great. They just need to know how much pre-treatment to apply. Applying the correct amount of pre-treatment will always, obviously, at the end of the day, give you the best quality. One of the other mistakes that we also make is not doing our height adjustment, right? So for those of you with a 330TX+, plus, you have the automatic height adjustment. By pressing function and rear at the same time, it allows your platen to lower your gantry to come up about three quarters of the way up and then scanning the top of it. That's when it knows that the sensor knows that that's as far as your platen should go. Your print head doesn't come into contact with anything. So height adjustments are very important when getting ready to print. Those startups or issues in the beginning are one of the most common ones, right? And then also making sure that your printer is also completely on, right? One of the uh, things that you, if any of you guys have ever noticed is if your printer is on standby and you don't see this green light on, right? Some customers may think that the printer is on because the functions will still work. You're able to press down and up and front and forward. And then you go over to try and print and it's saying that there's no communication. So always want to see two little lights, the status light, and your green light on, right? That'll always tell you that your printer is completely on uh, and making sure that you're ready to print. The height, right? Your platen placement, garments, all of those are most commonly seen issues when printing. And then obviously going into your uh, direct grip, ensuring that you have the correct setup. When you're ready to print, the first thing uh, you want to do is always choose your environment. In your direct grip, if you do not choose your environment, it will not let you print. It will give you an error where it, it's stating error device. The first thing you want to do in your direct grip is always choose the environment. Your environment, as you can see from here, I'll try and bring this a little closer, is at the always at the very top right. I'm going to down click and then choose whatever environment it is that you're going to print on, right? If you do not select your environment at that point, it's, again, it's not going to let you print. Uh, making sure that your, uh, uh, your garment is nice and centered. These are the most commonly known things. I'm going to get into one specific topic, which is head strikes, right? And avoiding them. I know we talked about platen placement and garment, making sure that it's nice and flat. But when you do get one, let's just say that you were to get one accidentally, right? I mentioned that pressing feeding will stop your printer from printing and it'll move it all the way to the home position. The, your printer, the back end by the bottles is your home position. The front is your print ready position. So you wanna make sure that you hit the feeding button, sends it all the way to the back. You wanna take the proper steps, making sure that you immediately take these, these, these steps, which is pressing function and up to undock your print head. You want to get a lint-free cloth, right? any of those blue lint-free cloth or your different colors now, you want to grab some of your super nozzle cleaner. And I know that I'm getting away from your actual uh, printing mistakes, but these are mistakes that can happen and can cause you, uh, that's a $1,300 mistake, right? So what you want to do is make sure that you, you move your platen out of the way, you press standby, you bring it all the way up to the front, so that that way you can work with your printer up here. With a lint-free cloth and your super nozzle cleaner, what you want to do is put it in a circular area and this lint-free cloth needs to be clean. What you want to do is you want to dab it. You don't want to move side to side or front to back. You just want to dab it. You want to tap about three, four times 
top of the printhead, then you want to load your wet cap system with super nozzle cleaner and then let it sit for a couple hours. After you let it sit for at least two to three hours, then you want to go and start priming your lines to ensure that anything that did come into contact with pretreatment is pushed out. If any of you guys have ever seen or have worked with me, I know that I've given you guys some tips and actually looking into, one of the things Victor says is that we look into the science all the time, right? So we do little science experiments. For those of you that have worked with me, I've always had you guys grab some of the white ink and some pretreatment, put it together and show you what happens. And when that comes into contact together, what you get is chunks, right? And it, it, it's instant, right? So we usually grab an empty cup and I ask you to place some white ink and pretreatment so that that way you can see what happens. So that happens inside your print head and that will cause you to have bad prints. You wanna ensure that you're paying attention of nice flat garment, perfect platen placement, choosing the right garment, doing your nozzle checks, choosing your environment, obviously avoiding head strikes, right? Making sure that everything is nice and even. Uh, one of the things that I tell customers too in the beginning is even though you're, you're, you're just starting or even if you've been doing it for a while, I, I, I've gotten to the habit and uh, I believe it was built into me by uh, Edsel, right? He uh, always told me get at eye level. So you always want to get at eye level to see if you miss anything, especially on those dark garments. You may not see something, you may miss a lifted area. That's also a mistake that we sometimes make is not to get at eye level to see and make sure that you're going to get a good print and that you're not going to have anything missed. So you want to ensure that uh, you get good quality prints, which is what you always get when you have a great nozzle check. So uh, those are the most common mistakes that we see when printing on a garment, especially in the beginning. Even some of us being here for a while still make those mistakes. So uh, you want to make sure that you avoid them and that uh, you stay away from, right? And uh, to do so, you gotta get into that habit of doing the same thing and repetitive, right? It's repetitive motion every single day is the same thing over and over and over again uh, to ensure that you get uh, great quality prints. I think, Ryan, we can go into some of our uh, Q&A questions here. Yeah, let's do it. So. Uh, generally, people how this how we like to work this is we'd like to bring people in live for Q and A. Uh, so if you've got questions, click on the little raise hand thing at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and I want to patch you in live to speak with Seraphine uh, and myself. And so while people are doing that, let's take a look at what's in the what's in the Q and A section right now. Sure. So Tr True has a question. She's uh, they say two questions for the Q and A segment. First, why do we work? In RGB, when the printer works in CMYK, can't wrap my head around it. There's one. And number two is, uh, is there a way to change the dimensions of a print when printing from a KPRN file? But number one, uh, the, the reason for, for that is because that's the way the RIP software reads it, right? So it reads it in RGB, even though we are using CMYK. Why it does it is just the way the program is built. Uh, there's no other answer than the way the software is built on the dimensions of the print when using a APRN file. That one right there, that I'm not quite understanding that question. If I can maybe uh, stick that somewhere and get back to you, Drew, I would uh, greatly appreciate the time. I'll make sure that I get one of our experts when it comes to the files and uploading them. It's uh, the design part of it, right? We, we have uh, some other experts that can assist us with that. Perfect. All right, uh, let's go ahead and bring in Terrence Carolina. Terrence, go ahead and just unmute yourself. Hello. Hey, hey Terrence. Terrence. Hey, how you doing? Good, hey. man. Nice to have um, you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I had did. I ran into this problem twice, where I would print something and it has these lines in it, and I was trying to figure out how to fix it. So now, are the lines that you're seeing? They're not part of the image, I'm guessing. And are they fine lines? Or are they small, tiny lines? Or are they large lines? It's lines? like, um, little, they'd be yellow and like the pinkish color, like little skinny lines throughout. Is that like the same color? That Does it match the same color that's printing in the garment? It doesn't match the same color. It doesn't match. Okay. The, uh, so the lighter the image is, it'll be like, you can see like yellow, light blue, and purple. The darker it is, you see like the red. 
and stuff like that. I see what you're saying. So that's usually banding, right? Um, and and you'll see that when you don't have a good nozzle check. So is your nozzle check good and you're printing and you're still having these lines? Yeah, I had a good nozzle check and I printed one before that, but it didn't come out right because and they had told me to use the water to do the purge. Right. And then, but it doesn't send pre-treatment all the way through the line when you do the second one. So I was testing it out and figured that out today because I only had it like a month. I got the direct treat of dual. So I only had it like a month. So like trial and error and all that stuff. Sure. Learning things and like, this happened twice on me with them lines. So now did it happen on two shirts or occasions where it was multiple shirts that you were printing? It happened yesterday and today. I, I did one yesterday and it did it. The rest of them was good. Okay. So, and, and you're saying when you looked at your nozzle check, everything looked good, right? Sometimes what will happen is the, the height, right? So if for whatever reason you have a little lift on your shirt, right? And, and you don't see it and it captures it on the sensors, then the height is too high. And sometimes you'll see like a mixture. It, the print will still look okay. The surrounding areas, you get, you get multiple things. You can either get overspray or it can get like a mixture of colors because as it's going down and spraying, instead of it spraying from this distance, right? It's spraying from this distance, just as an example. Uh, and it can cause it to blend and give you that. Maybe uh, send me a picture of it. Uh, Ryan, if you don't mind putting my email up there, you can send me sure. a picture of it and we can take a look at it more in depth, Terrence. All right, thank you. Uh, hey, you no got problem. it. Thanks, Terrence. Thank Appreciate it. Let's go to Carrie. Carrie, you're coming in. Yeah, it's Kari. Yeah. All right, excuse me. Kari, how you doing? All right, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing good, good Kari. Thanks for being yeah. here with us. All right, no, thank you for having us. Um, Our pleasure. I got two. I got two things. Um, one, um, I heard him mentioning a setting, a TX setting, a portrait setting. I missed the other one, but that's in the rip. So, what are those settings, and what's the difference when you're printing? The print environments are already set in there, right? So it's just making sure that you choose the correct one. So, for example, on a like I mentioned on a black one, make sure that you choose black media uh, on that particular one. Uh, if it's like a dark brown shirt or a blue shirt like this one, right? You want to make sure that you choose color media or dark media. And the settings are already set up on the environment. What I meant by that is, is you want to make sure that you choose an environment first before going to print. If you don't choose an environment, it won't it won't print. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with that. I just hadn't heard the TX and the portrait. So usually if if you have a TX plus, what we do to not confuse customers is we remove all the other stuff that doesn't apply to you. At okay. times we okay. may accidentally remove the photo one, uh, but you could go back in there and put it back in. If you see our video from last week, our last creator mode, it, I, I show you how to uh, bring everything back and refresh it. Well, I don't, I don't have the plug. My other question is, man, for about a week and it's killing me, I'm laying my fabrics down. But for some damn reason, when I print, I'm still getting these body like white images that look like the fabric was sticking up, like the white coming through my reds and some of my blues. So like pinholes, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Gotcha. So what what we're doing there sometimes wrong is a pre-treatment. Now, do you have a pre-treater uh, or do you use a spray gun? I'm using spray gun. Awesome. And I've been using it successfully for, you know, I've had the machine about three years, so I've had used this. It's, this is something that just started happening. H have you changed garments at all? No. Nope. No? It's the same type of garments, same I'm, brand, yeah. nothing's changed? Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, you're using the silicone sheet even, too. It's even happening on, like, I've used the um, RTPs. It's even happening on the RTPs. So when, when you go and you, you cure your, your, your ink, is it happening or as it's printing? Um, you can see it developing as it's printing. Once it's printing the reds, you can start, you start seeing them develop even then. And now these are, we're talking about cotton, right? So all, all the fibers are nice and, and flat. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
Now, yeah, by even turn the pressure up on the uh, press to make sure that it's pushing. Sure. And now, is your image the same? The, I mean, uh, the, the same images it happened in on, or multiple images? Multiples. And nozzle check looks good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one we'd want to probably look at. Do you, by any chance, have a ticket open now? No, I don't, but I can open no. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hit, hit up the support at omniprintonline.com and uh, I'll get one of uh, our techs to call you up and take a look at it. Maybe you can send in pictures and we can uh, get to the root of the issue there. Okay, I appreciate okay. it. All, All right, Corey. Right. Thank you. Thanks for being here, boss. All right, how how we feeling, Seraphine? It's a good question. Good. Good yeah, those are awesome message. questions. I'm liking it. That's why we're here. Okay, Terrence, coming at you here. Actually, T Terrence, one sec. Okay, go ahead, Terrence. I ain't seen another one. <laughs> oh, you didn't? <laughs> uh, oh, but, all right, all good. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I do can tell you something, though, but because uh, I noticed they don't tell people, though, about what with that direct treated dude, they need to make notes of. If they telling people to run water through it when they do the purge to treat the first shirt twice mm. because it'll, it'll pump out half water and then you see I watched it today oh, you see, the lines? The, yeah you see where the, the water's still over top of where the nozzle at but where the valve at is yeah, you can so, see where the um, pre-treatment coming in on that side so on that one it's distilled water that you want to run through to clean it right and then you want to purge it with your pre-treatment until you see the top of the lines uh, nice and solid white. Once you see it nice and solid, then it, then now you know you have only pre-treatment there and not water. Uh, so maybe there's a confusion there with the the, the video or uh, what you saw. Yeah, um, we can look at that. The guys yeah. that I talked to about it told me, the lady sent me a um, message and an email to do it like that. They say, because I was telling them when I purged, It'll be dump. It'll be wasting treatment. It'll be putting it in the way. So they was like, purge it. Do the first one with cut the water on. Let it run through. Cut it off. Then cut the treatment on. And then to do the second part of the purge. But I noticed it'll still be water in the line over top of where the thing at. So what I do, I treat it twice because mm -hmm. it'll treat half of the shirt. Half the bottom half would be water. The top half would be treatment. So I just treat it again so it'll be covered. Yeah, it, it, and your lines should look nice and solid, right? So if you don't see them nice and solid, do another purge, right? Which is, I mean, doesn't take very long, a couple seconds, just to make sure that we fill out the water and that we push out the water completely out of there. And then obviously at the end of the day, you want to make sure you run water through it, uh, take your, your nozzle tip off and make sure we keep that spray nice and even, right? So uh, yeah, take a look at that. Thanks, Terrence. We'll take a look at the video. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to go into um, Pete. Well, I, I was listening because the guy was talking about uh, the lines in the shirt. Same thing. I I, I, I actually was working on uh, a shirt today, a couple of shirts today, and I actually got that same problem with the lines going through the shirt um, on two shirts back to back. Same color. Yeah. It wasn't even the color of the uh, design that I had. It came out a totally different color. And your nozzle check looks good, right? Yeah, nozzle check was good. And the file saved in RGB. Yeah. Right. Nice high quality. Yeah, we want to want to make sure that we uh, we're, we're taking a look at the design and then going into the print preview. Have you had your machine for a while, Pete? About three months. About three months. Is this the first time it happens? Um, no, this is not the first time it happened before I picked it. Uh, it happened before on other shirts that I have done, but sure. I figured it, I had, you know, I just ran another nozzle check. I ran another head clean and then I did a nozzle check. And then after that, I ran, the, I, I fed the lines. I ran the feed. And, and, and everything was good after that? After I did that, it was good, but I didn't do it today. I just, I'm like, because I didn't have a prop, it wasn't, and I just wanted to see what it, I ran it on the shirt again just to see what it did. I made sure everything was flat down. I made sure everything was right. We also want to look at those white lines, right? So you just reminded me of something, Pete. One of the biggest things, too, is uh, when, when it comes to printing is making sure that your lines are nice, uh, white, and solid, right? And, and if they're not, right, every morning, 
we should be coming, if you don't have a, a TX Plus, uh, you should be coming in and taking your bottles out and ensuring that you swirl them, right? And what I mean, you don't want to shake them up so that they don't foam up too much. You just want to swirl them. That's if you have, and I just want to make sure that I shared that with everybody, is that you swirl them for about 15 to 20 seconds each to ensure that you, you mix your, your inks. The Plus does it on, on its own, right? That's why we keep it on at night to ensure that it circulates. Uh, so if, if your white lines weren't solid, uh, it can also be from that. Uh, it could have given you a light nozzle check and then also clean it off. Uh, at the end of the night, because uh, if we don't clean it off, if we're printing it on the flatten itself, we may forget to clean it off and it'll get stuck there. And then you'll see these lines after the time and you'll think you have a good nozzle check, but in reality, you don't. Just double check Pete and see if maybe another head cleaning will do it and then print again and then see if that, that fixes uh, the issue on yours. Uh, I'm, uh, I am going to try that because right now I've been trying to... Um... I had just purchased the double sleeve plate a few days ago. Sure. I I, I didn't send the message to uh, Dave, Dave, who was my own um, guy. Sure. And I was telling him I'm having trouble having putting this setting into my uh into the RIP program. Hmm. And uh I still I still haven't heard from him yet. They told me they sent me a message of what to do. They said open it up on Photoshop. I did that, but it's not allowing me to open a file in Photoshop to set the double sleeve place. So you mean your your the template, right? Is that the one you're talking about? Yes. Okay. So my email, uh, Ryan put it up on the uh, on the chat of the Zoom. Grab it. Yep. Send me an email, and I'll send you the template to make sure that you have the right one. Okay. There we go. All right, Pete, we appreciate you, man. There is a question in the Q&A one. It says, should yeah. we auto height adjust after every print? So in the beginning, uh, is that it, Harem? 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 Yeah, in, in the beginning, Harem, I would definitely do it every single time just to get in the habit, right? Making sure that, that you, you, you get in the habit in the beginning so that it never goes away. As you start to build and get better, right? What do they say? 21 days to build a habit, right? So after you, you build that habit and know your height, right? And making sure that you're always checking your height adjustment, getting at eye level, and you're using the same garment, same color, same brand, same everything, then you can get to the point where you load it up, you look at it, you make sure it's fine, then you just hit standby, right? But in the beginning, yes, I would say definitely do a height adjustment after every print in the beginning, just to get in the habit. Once you get in the habit, you'll see, it'll come become second nature to you to check, even, even lift up your plan, double check and make sure it's good, load it up, hit standby, and you're ready to go. Obviously, if you change the type of shirt, the brand, maybe even the color, uh, you may want to do a new height adjustment because the thickness of the garments can change, right? But make sure we don't get a head strike. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Seraphine. Uh, Colorbound, go ahead and unmute and you'll be ready to come in. Hello. How you doing? Hey. How you Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Of course. What's your name? Asfa. Asfa? Yes. Thank you for being here, Asfa. What can we do for oh, you? Thank you. Yeah, uh, my question is, I've got two questions. Uh, uh, the first one is we're being uh, asked the line on the design, which is... Uh, uh, especially, I have it on uh, a red print, a red ink on a, a te on a text. Uh, so uh, I know it has been mentioned almost. This is the third time being mentioned. And the second question I have is, uh, I, I mean, I practice it myself, but I just want to make sure when you nozzle check, or of course you're gonna, you know, adjust the height of the platen and. Once you do that, after you load the uh, garment, do you have to adjust the height or just? Yes. So, yes. So I get what you're saying. You, so when you do your nozzle check, right? When you print your nozzle check, it goes to the back. Yes. At that point, when once you load up a garment, you want to do the, the, the height adjustment again. Reason for that is, is because right now it doesn't have a garment on top, right? And the moment that you put a garment on there, it obviously, it's now a little higher, right? So you want to make sure that you do your height adjustment again to ensure that you get the height of the, your actual garment. So yes, you want to make sure after you do a nozzle check, 
yes, please make sure that you do a height adjustment or you can run into that issue where it gives you a head strike. Okay, well, one more thing uh, uh, in addition to this. Uh, I know we had the rip, we went through it, uh, I think it was last week. I think I believe it wasn't as deep as I think we should know about it because uh, there's a lot of things that I have learned, especially uh, I had to talk to one of your tech yesterday about my issue and that he was uh, mentioning that that I never even knew on a RIP software, it, you know, uh, how to adjust the chalk. So right. such a stuff, I mean, a deep, uh, it doesn't have to be really deep uh, training, but at least somehow a little bit more than what we did last week. That would be nice for a future. I uh, just want to right. suggest that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So that, that is something that Ryan and I are working on and making sure that we have a little bit more of an advanced training. And uh, yeah, we will definitely get to it. I appreciate your feedback on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, all right. Let's see. We've got, is there a template for the single sleeve toddler and zipper platen? Yes, there is. Yep. Just send me an email and I will get those over to you. One, right. one suggestion that I'd like to make to our customers, something that, that we we do here at Omniprint. I know that it's not based off of a quality print, right? But it's just something that we, we like to do here. And that, that's to purchase and get these uh, uh, transparent sheets, right? Makes it a lot easier to look at your, your nozzle check. And when you do your, your height adjustment, right? Usually what we like to tell customers is you want it to be out maybe about third of an inch to the top and a little bit out sitting towards the side of the, uh, the platen to ensure that it prints right. And then you do a manual height adjustment to ensure that it picks up the sheet. But these sheets are lifesavers because especially after you've printed for a long time on top of your platen, and if we ever do forget to remove it, it will dry up and it's very difficult to take it off after time, right? So having these transparent sheets, you can do multiple prints, right? Cause you can uh, nozzle checks and you can turn it around. And these are also great for record keeping. At the end of, uh, at the, end of the, the sheet, you can put the date and time, right? Uh, so if you're a company that's been doing it and you have two shifts after you, your first shift, you know, your second shift comes in and they can write and the time as well and the date that their nozzle check looks. So that that way, if you do ever have any issues or running into a problem, and you call tech support, you can tell us the last time that you had a good nozzle check and what it looks like so that we can kind of start there. It makes your, uh, your uh, trouble to go a little faster too if you're having issues with quality of print. So that's a suggestion. Seraphine, Henry wants to know where you get the sheets. Uh, those sheets are sold at uh, uh, Staples. Uh, Michaels has them. I believe we get them from uh, Staples. Perfect. All right. We're, we've got time for one more question, folks. Um, I think we've gotten through everybody. If so, if there's one more person here who wants to raise their hand. I see a question on here. Uh, if you flip your platen backwards so that it prints the whole nozzle check. I guess what you're saying is if you have it like this, yes, you're right. If you, if you turn it sideways, it does stick out further. So you can lay down the sheet here uh, so that it prints it. Because on the other one, right, it, it prints right at the edge. Uh, that's a great suggestion there. Thank you. All right, folks. Uh, okay. Well, we got one more. Ricardo, I'm bringing you in. Got one more question here, and then I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple of other things, and then we'll we'll head out. Ricardo, go ahead and unmute yourself. Are you printing on a shirt with a pocket? Yeah. So yeah. So what you want to do if uh, if you're talking about printing on the pocket, you want to make sure that you align it right to the middle. At that point, you're going to have to use measurements if you don't have a chest platen. If you have a pocket that's sticking when you tuck it in, so for as an example, if you have a pocket and you want to print on that pocket, you want to make sure that that is centered and that you have it right where you want, want it to print. Uh, if you're talking about when you load up the shirt and the pocket is sticking out, you want to make sure that you do a manual height adjustment. And those of you obviously seeing you just do a uh, uh, automatic height adjustment, right? Which is function rear. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to get to that point of the garment, right? Let's just say that it's somewhere around here. What you want to do is you want to line up the two sensors that are up in the front 
right? And I want to turn this a little bit so you can see it better. So you want to line up these two sensors to where your pocket is, right? Because that has a seam and that's going to be your highest point. And what you want to do is then at that point is press up until it stops. If I keep pressing up, it's not going to go up anymore. Think of these sensors as garage door sensors, right? When you get to a garage door and you hit the sensor, what does it do? It stops, right? The, the garage door, same thing, right? And when at that point, if you were to check it, you can press function enough at where you have it just to double check it and make sure. And you can get at eye level and ensure that your print head is right where it needs to be. Uh, like I had mentioned before, it's about three to four millimeters from your garment. So you can always get at eye level, make sure that there's a gap. If you see it really close to it, you can also slide it back and forth to ensure that it looks good, right? That it's gonna be right over the garment opposed to it being too much of a gap or too close uh, where it's gonna come into contact. Yeah, that's the best way to print on a garment, I mean on a pocket, if you don't have the chest button. Uh, if you have the chest platen, all you got to do is line it up on the chest platen and that, that'll pretty much do the trick for you. Good question, Ricardo. Perfect. All right, guys, uh, we're going to impromptly today. Um, we've got about six minutes here left and I want to talk to you about a couple of things. First off, Seraphine, awesome job, dude. You deliver value every single week. Uh, yeah. And if you guys are getting value out of these, can you just let us know in the chat section real quick? Just drop, just drop something in there like, I love these. Um, I wish these were, were different. These are awesome. Give us something. I want to get some feedback from you guys because this is our third Suggestions. one. Suggestions. Yeah, these are our third. This is our third one. Um, the last one went well. This one I thought also went, went well. The first one, if you weren't on the first one, literally like two seconds into going live with this thing, the entire studio lost power. So like it was a dumpster fire, uh, but we got through. And so we're going to continue doing these every single week. Um, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. Invite your friends, folks. If they own a free jet, or if you got people that work for you that are operating machines, invite them. Make sure that they are here, because um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep doing this over time. Um, and my goal here is I want to get 200 free jet owners in this weekly coaching call and in, on any given week. Okay. So you guys know other free jet owners. Um, you might know other people who are interested in, in, or who are, who are printing with other, with other DTG products. I'm thinking about opening it up to people outside of the free jet community, but I kind of like the exclusivity. We might do that once a month or something uh, if we're feeling generous. But the goal here again is to build a community that is positive, that is learning and that, that, that where we're all developing each other. Okay. So, but two things here uh, before we go. One, we just launched today a new platen. It is a shoe platen, okay? We, again, we just launched a couple of hours ago a brand new shoe platen here at Omniprint that is patented and made right in Irvine, California, and it is freaking awesome. We have not told anybody else in the world about this thing yet. Um, we just got it up on the site, and I wanted to, to roll that out and announce that to you guys here on the call today because you're here you're investing in it. Uh, you're investing in your, your time. Uh, you're investing in the experience. And we want to we want to develop products for you that are going to help you take your business to the next level. So again, Omniprint just launched its first ever shoe patent that was designed and developed right in our headquarters in, in Irvine, California. And I will post a link to it. Um, I will post a link to it here in the chat. But guess what? We have a total of five. We have five in stock. And I've personally had people emailing me and hitting me up on Facebook or in the owners group looking for shoe platen. So if you guys want a shoe platen and you're interested in it, I'm going to post the link in the chat and y'all get in there and take a look at it. It is not, yeah, Richard, it's not going to be a cheap product. So don't go into expecting this thing to be the lowest cost on the market. This is, this is a product that has been in the R&D lab for a year's time. Uh, and we've been working and completely designing the engine on how this thing functions from the ground up. And th there's nothing like it on the marketplace. So again, I will post a link um, in this chat. You guys can go take a look at it. If you have questions, either hit up your rep or send me a message on Facebook and I'll get you pointed in the right direction. All right. So bam, there's that. You guys enjoy. Take a look at it. It's freaking awesome. We're going to be posting a video on how to use it as well. And that we just need to put some voice over to it, which Mauricio, 
who's our backbone to how to making all of these work. He's going to be putting on some, some voiceovers with that with the R&D team. And so we'll get you a video live of it too. Second thing, which is also equally important. So if you didn't capitalize it in the month of February, we had 10% off of all of our inks, pre-treatments and cleaners. That deal went away. However, uh, there's another way to get that deal. As you also know, I told you guys last week or the week before, we also just launched the subscription subscribe and save service for all of our inks, pre-treatments and cleaners. That means instead of you having to write post-it notes or write yourself a reminder on your whiteboard in the office, you can just sign up to have your inks, pre-treatments and cleaners automatically delivered to you on whatever schedule you want for the convenience. But also as of an hour ago, I, myself and the team, Victor uh, and, and the rest of the team, we decided that we were going to put a 10% promotion. So you get 10% off of every single ink delivery that you sign up for with subscribe and save. So that means instead of having to wait for a random promo to go live on a February or a March, you can now simply sign up for subscribe and save, and you're going to get 10% off of every single delivery. You will not get that just by going on the site. Okay. Every delivery of ink, pre-treatment and cleaner will be 10% off if and only if you sign up for subscribe and save. So we have not launched that either uh, yet to the um, to anybody else in our, in our community. And so you guys are the first ones to literally get access to these promos. The first ones, um, all 35 of you who are on the, on here right now. So we are excited about those. We want to give you value and we're going to continue to optimize the experience here, whatever we're going to be doing here. So appreciate you all. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. We've got a couple of other hot topics coming on. I mean, is Seraphine, anything else you want to say? No, uh, it was great questions today, guys. Like uh, Ryan said, any feedback uh, and maybe some suggestions of what you would like to also hear or maybe have a creator's live for, please drop them on the chat and uh, we can uh, definitely get to them and uh, help you guys get more value for your buck, right? Perfect. All right, guys. Well, everybody, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you here next week. Thank you. See you guys.